We welcome you to snowy Chicago, where this afternoon we've got Missouri Valley Conference men's basketball this afternoon between the visiting Bradley Braves and the hometown Loyola Chicago Ramblers. And the Missouri Valley Conference making some news earlier this week with the Murray State Racers joining on for the conference next season after the Belmont Bruins joined into the conference earlier in this season for the 22-23 year. So two new faces heading into the Missouri Valley Conference for next season. And alongside David Kaplan, I'm Jordan Burnfield. Thanks so much for joining us here inside Genteel Arena. And Cap, some big news for the Valley with Murray State joining on with Belmont. So a couple of fresh faces being added to this great conference. Yeah, two big time programs. I mean, you know when you're gonna face Belmont, you got your hands full. And then you add in Murray State, and Murray State gets up and down the court. So you better have guys in your program that understand that tempo, because they're really good. Already a great basketball league, only going to get stronger. Let's talk about today's game. The Bradley Braves coming off a very tough loss on Wednesday against Missouri State after Isaiah Mosley hit a three to beat them. But Bradley is a team that's been playing a lot better of late, and Terry Roberts has been a big reason why. Well, Terry Roberts had a bad game the other night. That's just, that happens. He makes one of four shots. He has three points in the game. This guy is a really good basketball player. I would think, knowing how Brian Wardle challenges his guys, Terry Roberts is going to come in here with something to prove today. That wasn't me the other night, because go back and look at his numbers. With a three-point night, he's averaging 16 points a game. And then my guy Lucas Williamson, I've called a lot of his games over his great career here at Loyola. I just love how this guy plays. He's a defender. He can make shots. He can beat you off the deck in transition. He finishes at the rim. Lucas Williamson, one of my favorite players to watch because he is a winner. The Ramblers have won six straight games and 28 straight at home in that winning streak on the line against Brian Wardle's Bradley Braves. It's coming up next. State Farm thing. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I think we're in a commercial. Jake from State Farm, I knew it. Don't worry, Chris, things are gonna go surprisingly great. Dad, look! Ooh, see, surprising. Just like State Farm surprisingly great rates. I, w I didn't even record it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Are you ready for this sports season? The licensed clinical experts at SSM Health Physical Therapy are. Don't let aches, pain, or an injury keep you from watching your favorite team compete or participating in your favorite activities. Trust our physical therapists to help you feel better, faster, and to get you back to the things you love. With many convenient locations throughout the community, SSM Health Physical Therapy is here to help you heal. To schedule an appointment today, go to SSMPhysicalTherapy.com and experience the power of physical therapy. It's more than an attraction, it's a destination. Spend a day doing it all. Can we go for a ride? That's amazing! Hmm, so where is this? It's all here at St. Louis Union Station. Plan your visit at stlewisunionstation.com. Arch Madness tips off March 3rd through 6th in St. Louis, and the MVC Fan Hangout is back at Ballpark Village. The MVC Fan Hangout is the place to celebrate before and after all games at Enterprise Center and Ballpark Village, including newly opened sports and social, featuring restaurants, entertainment, and everything Arch Madness. The fun starts two hours before the first game every day of the tournament. For more for information, visit archmadness.com. We'll see you there. The Missouri Valley Game of the Week is brought to you by State Farm. For surprisingly great rates, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Great Southern Bank, understanding what really matters. By Prairie Farms, farmer-owned, locally produced since 1938. And by Grinnell Mutual Insurance, trust in tomorrow. And welcome back inside Gentile Arena as we get you set for this good one between the Loyola Chicago Ramblers and the Bradley Braves. 
Let's take a look at our keys to the game, a presentation of SSM Health Physical Therapy, the official physical therapy partner of the MVC and Arch Madness cap. Well, for Bradley, you've got to guard the three because Loyola is lethal from the three, but don't get caught down at the block. You can't double that block and recover as quickly as you need to. For Loyola, you got to land the first punch. Haven't played at home in eons. Well, land the first punch. Do not let Bradley get going quickly. And then swing it, swing it, swing it, swing it. That means side to side, make that defender move, and then quick to the other side, boom, you should get pretty good open looks. Here today's starting lineups brought to you by Grinnell Mutual Insurance Trust in tomorrow for the Loyola Ramblers. This has been their standard lineup through the duration of the season. Brayden Norris, Marquise Kennedy, and Lucas Williamson, your guards with a here Uguak at forward, and Jacob Hudson is the center for the Bradley Braves. Terry Roberts, the leading scorer, along with the freshman Connor Hickman at the guards' positions. Also, Jason Kent with Deshaun Henry out. Rink Masta forward along with Malibai Leons. We're getting set to go here at Gentile Arena where they're introducing the Ramblers right now for Loyola. This is a team that's won six straight games and just two days ago, they were out in Salt Lake City and played against the San Francisco Dons, two teams in the top 40 in the net rankings. Loyola picked up a 79 to 74 victory in a game that was quickly scheduled because there were openings due to COVID-19 cancellations and the Ramblers coming up with another big victory and off to a great start in 10 and two. So I used to have to make the calls for scheduling for our head coach, the late John McDougall, when I was at Northern as an assistant. And you'd call and it was easy. You'd do it in April, May, June. Might have a late one in August. I cannot imagine in the middle of December going, we haven't played in two weeks. We'll meet you in Salt Lake City. You come from Frisco, we'll come from Chicago. I can't imagine the calls that are going on in the text. And Drew Valentine responsible for that in his first season as the Loyola Ramblers head coach, the youngest coach in Division I off to a 10-2 and two start as he begins his Ramblers tenure. On the other side, it's Brian Wardle in his seventh season with the Bradley Braves, just reached 100 victories with the school. And Brian Wardle's team in between Loyola's two trips deep into the NCAA tournament, Brian Wardle's Bradley Braves won at Arch Madness and won the Missouri Valley Conference Championship. So away we go here at the Genteel Arena. The opening tip won by the Bradley Braves. They're in red, the Ramblers in those gray alternate uniforms. And on the first possession, a steal from a hero, Guac, who drives the lane to score. What a great job defensively by Uguak to read that pass. Bam, I'm in the passing lane, I'm gone the other way. That's how you get off to a quick start. Last year, he was an all-defensive team selection was Uguak. This year, third on the team in scoring as a super senior. Connor Hickman threw that one off. Jason Kent and out of bounds. Another turnover for the Braves. This is how you play a passing lane. He sees it. Ball, you man. He knows. Hey, my guy, 10. He's out there. I'm going to step in, and if that pass is too low, it's gone the other way for an easy deuce. So the Ramblers back down the floor on offense. Here is Lucas Williamson. Into the corner for Marquise Kennedy, who's been lethal off the bench in the past, but this year a regular starter. See how we've gone three times side to side already. Swing it, swing it, swing it. Great defensive play on the low post. Rink Mass the steal. And now Leon's trying to get to the paint, but an offensive foul. Got to give Rink Mass some love, though. When you guard the low post, if that ball's below the free throw line extended, you got to play baseline side. But the ball was above. He played it correctly. High side, didn't foul. Hand in the passing lane. Boom, gone the other way. The Ramblers 6-0 at home so far this year. The Bradley Braves 1-3 to start on the road. They've won six of their last nine games after starting the year 1-5. Here's Hudson underneath. That's swatted away by Mast out of bounds. Loyola will keep 15 to shoot. Mast has developed. You can see the definition in his shoulders. You know, we see him when he first gets to college, and you're thinking, okay, how hard do you want to work in the weight room? Big guys you know, play a lot because they're big. He loves the game. You can tell he's put a lot of effort in. Preseason 13, all NBC selection is Mast. 
Here is Williamson, fired a rocket at Marquise Kennedy, couldn't handle it out of bounds. Went with the fastball on that throw. He did. Uh, he'll watch that one back and go. Had him wide open. <laughs> That's on him. Happens. Here's the freshman Connor Hickman driving the paint. And now they work it into the post for Mast. Goes against Hudson. The hook shot good. I'm telling you what, good footwork. This kid's a really, really good low post player for the Bradley Braves. Fourth on the team in scoring. First in rebounding is Mast. And now Williamson on the wing, swatted out of bounds by Terry Roberts. We talked about it in the open, Jordan. Terry Roberts only took four shots the other night. I wasn't at the game. I saw some highlights, and I said to you, how does he only take four shots? Scored three points. I would think this is a real challenge for him. Put that one away quickly. Kennedy underneath fires out to Norris for three, and Braden Norris cashes in. Well, they swarm the ball down in the paint, and nobody was able to get out. When Norris sets his feet, he's pretty tough. Double team, and that one out of bounds. It will stay with the Bradley Braves. You mentioned Terry Roberts. You see him there. He has led his team in points and assists eight times this season, averaging almost 16 points per game and four assists per game. So to see him register just three, certainly not what Bradley fans have become accustomed to since he transferred into this program from Florida Southwestern. Williamson miscommunication with the here. Uguak throws it out of bounds. A little too much over dribbling there by Lucas. You know, he made the one that was the fastball that he threw away, but this one just too much dribbling in the paint. Catch, and if you don't have a lane, move it, move it, move it. Now Roberts being picked up by Williamson at the Loyola logo near midcourt. Good feet underneath to Mast, and he scores. Mast with four early points for the Braves. Roberts, the near steal. Chris Knight able to keep it. In the corner, here's Ryan Schwieger for three off target. That's a good shot for him. They found him. Just didn't knock it down, but Loyola will take that all day long. And now Jason Kent in the corner misses a three widely. And Williamson comes across for the Ramblers. Schwieger coming in off the bench, the leading scorer for Loyola. And now Williamson with space for three, but misses from the wing. Good look right there for Lucas. Wide open is Mast for three. Mast doesn't take a lot of three-point shots, but when you're that open, why not? And Schwieger is fouled as it brings us to a timeout on the floor. Well, when you pass the ball effectively, look at that. Good catch. Don't put it on the deck in the paint. Just finish at the rim. The big Every sunrise offers new opportunities to dream big or to take that next small step. Every sunrise is another chance to build on the one before or to start with a clean slate because every sunrise is tomorrow's promise made real. And Grinnell Mutual is tomorrow's promise protected. Trust in tomorrow and contact a Grinnell Mutual agent today. It's coming snow and this winter when you find yourself looking at this 
don't do this or this. Now, there's a much better way. When it comes to snow, go with Snow Joe, the number one brand of cordless snow blowers. Snow Joe's cordless snow shovels and blowers are the lightweight, gas-free way to clear walkways, driveways, decks, steps, sidewalks, and yards. Wherever it snows, Snow Joe goes. From lightweight 24-volt cordless shovels that clear up to 300 pounds of snow per minute with no bending, no straining, to cordless blowers that clear up to 10 tons of snow on a single charge, there's a Snow Joe that'll do the job. The secret is Snow Joe's exclusive Ion Plus Lithium Ion Technology that drives a heavy-duty, rubber-tipped steel blade auger shredding snow without scratching the pavement. And they start with the push of a button. Call now for prices as low as $199.99 or just $19 a month online at snowjoetvoffer.com. This is the first game here at the Gentile Arena since we lost our dear friend and former Loyola TV analyst Jeff Dickerson. You may know him as a longtime ESPN NFL reporter, ESPN's NFL Nation and ESPN Radio 1000 in Chicago, also ESPN Radio nationally. JD and I did the games together for 10 years. We miss him terribly. He lost his battle with colon cancer at the age of 44 just a couple of weeks back. But JD, we're all thinking about you today coming in and seeing your chair. It's uh, certainly tough for all of us. We miss you. We love you. And we send our best to Parker, his son. And Parker, anytime you come down to a Loyola game, you can sit right in your dad's old seat. So I moved over one seat and left a seat between us. I worked with JD at radio. You worked with him here. That seat's his. And so we showed you the name card, but like I've got chills right now. Just cannot believe this is the first game. And he was, he should have been sitting next to us. It's, he should be. This is your chair, Dave, JD. It's always going to be your we chair. Love you, man. We love you. Always going to be his chair. That is absolutely for sure. Here is Leons on the drive. Threw that one away from Mast out of bounds. Right. Kent should have slid down to the corner. Now, again, you're not expecting that pass to be errant to that degree. But if he slides down there, you could get the ball to, the, to Mast on the low post and then kick to the corner for a look. Here's Tate Hall in off the bench for Loyola. Ryan Schwieger on the wing, guarded by Roberts with five to shoot. Navigates inside to Chris Knight, misses the shot, end of the shot clock, got to put it up, but too late. That shot will not count. Violation against the Ramblers. Time to take a look at today's MVC men's basketball standings. They're made possible by the Hampton Inn, Chicago, North Loyola Station. Call 312-265-5800 or visit Hampton Inn, Loyola.com to book your hotel rooms for your team's game at Loyola or your next trip to Chicago. Ramblers haven't had a lot of opportunities against the Valley yet. Only one before this game today, but Loyola off to a 10-2 start. And looking like they're going to be extremely strong in the Valley this year. Southern Illinois won its first one, and then you see the parity at the beginning of the Valley season, which we often see, right? Beginning of the year, you just feel like you're you're trying to see what's going to happen in these early games. Right, Bradley has had so many games with three minutes to go. They had the lead and couldn't close it out. Now, Brian would tell you, we got to close those out. We got to get it done. I'm going to tell you it's a young team. It's a developing team. I'm a huge Brian Wardle guy. And you talk about a team that defends, that guy can coach some defense. Welcome in all our viewers along the Valley Network watching today. Six to four. The Loyola Chicago Ramblers the lead over Bradley. A little under six minutes into this one in Chicago. Here's Rink Mast posting up on Chris Knight. And another good looking hook that, from yeah, Mast. Really solid. Footwork's good. I like to watch at the fundamentals how he plays. His fundamentals look vastly improved. Schwieger on the drive gets that one to fall. Schwieger with three points for Loyola. Mast with all six for Bradley here in the early going. 
Roberts makes a move around Schwieger and stops on the block. Fall away jumper, no. Mask right there for the second chance, no. How about Leones grabbing the rebound but then threw it off the hands of Roberts? Yeah, I don't think Roberts expected to get that ball back. Terry Roberts will head to the bench for the Braves. Size of the coaching staff on that Rambler bench. <laughs> Almost as many as play. We each got our own coach. Love well, also Loyola's coaching staff, probably the best shoe game in the biz. Yes, in fact, Drew Valentine sent me the link yesterday. I already ordered a pair. I'm buying the Loyola colors. I think those shoes are so cool. They're great. The maroon and gold. Here's Schwieger, the bucket and the foul. Mikey Howell picking up the foul, and Ryan Schwieger now with five early points. Ryan Schwieger has been such a great addition for this Loyola team. The transfer from Princeton, the Ramblers are 7-0 when he scores 10-plus points. He is the leading scorer for Loyola coming off the bench this year. Talking to Drew Valentine even before the season cap, he said, listen, I know that the two guys that we brought in, Schwieger and Chris Knight, could make an enormous impact on this program. I asked him when we talked to him yesterday, did you feel like Ryan Schwieger could make this big of an impact on your program? He said, I don't know about leading the team in scoring, but he said, yes, both of these guys play the way that we want to play, and they have been huge additions to this team. Here's Marquise Kennedy on the drive. Can't get that one over the rim. Vile Tavanainen down the floor. Hickman tried to hit Leon's out of bounds. Boy, end to end action. Kennedy, I think, over penetrated there. A second defender came over and helped out, and it just made it almost impossible for him to get the ball up high enough on the window to try and score. Probably want to throw that one back out top. Here's Howell now working against Kennedy. Lost his footing. Hickman able to keep it. Pinballs out of bounds to Loyola. Yeah, Tal Vinen. First, I thought Lucas Williamson was going to come up with it. He pinballed it, as you said, one way. And Tal Vinen knocked it out of bounds. Vile Tavaninen, the junior from Helsinki. I've been to Helsinki. Have you really? Really cool city. All right. Really cool. When it's still light at 2 in the morning in June, it's weird. But it's really cool. <laughs> that I can imagine. I hear Ugwak with the slam with two hands off the feed from Williamson. Boy, did a really nice job to slip a screen and then passes right on the money and there's no way you're stopping him there. 7 nothing run for the Ramblers. Good pass inside and Kent answers with the dunk. Now Williamson almost had that one pickpocketed. Beautiful pass, and Uglock the beneficiary again, and a timeout taken by Brian Wardle. Well, you can't swarm the ball to that degree and leave the back end completely wide open. See how he looks like he's gonna screen, roll to the basket, get me the basketball, I'll finish, and then eh, anything you can do, I can do better. What lies beyond today? Beyond ourselves? Beyond the fear of the unknown? Beyond what we think of as limits? Compelled by curiosity, we look for answers. Fueled by community, we strive further. Whatever lies beyond, we were built to find it. Built by someone who knew that beyond is not a destination, but a lifetime of beginning the journey again and again. When you're in Chicago for the big game, business or vacation, stay at the preferred hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference, the Hampton in Chicago, North Loyola Station. The Hampton in Chicago, North Loyola Station features relaxing guest rooms, spectacular views from the rooftop terrace, workout facilities, and free high-speed wireless. Located adjacent to the LUC campus, steps from the CTA Red Line, and several dining options, the Hampton Inn is the place to stay when your favorite Valley school is in town. The preferred hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference, the Hampton in Chicago, North Loyola Station. You are beautifully unique. 
unapologetically academic. You're not afraid to color outside the lines, and neither are we. Imagine yourself here in modern labs designed for 21st century students. Drake is a university with a vibrant capital city right next door, where you get a degree that gets employers' attention. This is Drake University, where you will stand out from day one. Learn more at drake.edu. We believe banking should make your life greater. It starts with affordable options to meet today's needs and tomorrow's dreams. From smart account options that fit your style to flexible loans for what comes next. It means convenient ways to access and manage your money whenever you need it and wherever you're headed. Most of all, it takes great support. Someone you can count on for trusted guidance and to be there for you every step of the way. Great options, great convenience, great support for life. Great Southern Bank, understanding what really matters. 15-8 Loyola Chicago, the lead on Bradley. Today's Bird Watch is presented by Great Southern Bank. Understanding what really matters. A couple of those guys in our game today. Malibai Leons, 11 points, almost six rebounds per game. After transferring into this program from Mineral Area CC, he's been outstanding. We know about A.J. Green at UNI. Outstanding score for Ben Jacobson's squad. And Ryan Schwieger, I don't think a lot of people expected that he was going to be on this list after coming in from Princeton. But if Loyola winds up, at the top of the standings at the end of the year and he's their leading scorer he's going to get a lot of consideration no question about it and as you said drew told us yesterday when we spoke to him you know yes we thought he'd be a factor for us but as you asked him and he said to this level we're surprised but we're thrilled great southern bank in the valley are proud to recognize the league's player of the year with the larry bird trophy ray norris came away with that one Finds Ublock on the wing, and there's the steal. Roberts all alone to the bucket and throws it down. Really nice job by Terry Roberts. He's watching it. He sees the ball on the wing, and he knows where that thing's coming. He's watched the scouting reports. He's watched the film. He said, they're going to try to reverse the ball. Bam! I'm gone. First basket of the game for Terry Roberts. Kennedy working on Tabanainen, and, and that drops, and a foul. Tough shot. I mean, you teach him, throw it up, you never know what could happen. See how he read that the whole way. He's got his right hand out into the passing lane. Boom, gone the other way. Good job, Terry Roberts. And now Marquise Kennedy. Just th throw it up, you never know. You see, Ville goes, how did that go in? <laughs> yeah. And Kennedy really had to fight that one up to the basket. A little bit of a different looking press. He went 1-1, 2-1 last time. A little different, just a nuisance press. Not really designed at this stage of the game to take the ball away. Nuisance. There's Kent against Ublock. See how far out Jordan they're having to start their offense? Shot clock's at three. They got to hurry. Here's Mast into the clock. No, but put back in underneath the basket. Zeke Montgomery just found a way in. Ublock now Ublock got hit. is down. Yeah, he got hit. So here Ublock laying on the court at the moment, and this is not something you want to see if you're Loyola. Now here Ublock, one of the most valuable players on this Loyola team. Let's take another look. He got hit by his own man. Yeah, that's Kennedy got him. Yep, Kennedy got him with his left elbow. All unintentional, but as he, boom, down he goes. I mean, he got hit hard. Drew Valentine talking to his coaching staff. Uguak remains on the floor being tended to by the training staff. 18-12, the Ramblers lead over Bradley here at the Gentile Arena. And you just hope that Ahir Uguak is okay. One of the four super seniors for this Loyola team. And super senior, what I mean by that is the guys that came back with the extra year due to COVID eligibility. There were 430 super seniors that used their extra year 
as a result of the pandemic. 30 of them went back to the same school. Loyola has four of them. And so that shows you the nucleus of the team for this year. When you're able to bring back guys like Ahir Ugwak and Keith Clemens and Tate Hall and, of course, Lucas Williamson, that's quite... And he's laughing now. He got a big smile on his face, took a deep breath. Like, he got drilled, Jordan. Yeah, he did. He They'll did. do a, a concussion protocol test here because he got hit in the head. Yeah, he's going to go back to the locker room. You hope he's okay. It's quite the get for Drew Valentine in his first season to be able to convince those four seniors to stay where they were. But it tells you what they thought of him when he was promoted when Porter left to go to Oklahoma. That's right. Raiden Norris driving baseline. Feed Schwieger who finishes. A lot of point touch, uh, paint touches for points. Bradley has 10 points in the paint. Make that mass and with one. the bucket. Yep. And the foul against Jacob Hudson. Really good job by Schwieger. Great cut, outstanding pass by Norris, and that's just finishing in the paint. And then at the other end, Rink Mast is continuing to show you his footwork and his abilities around the rim. Just a sophomore. Sophomore from the Netherlands. In your European tour, did you ever hit the Netherlands, Cap? I did not hit the Netherlands. Okay. I've done Sweden, I've done Italy, Spain, Helsinki, Finland, Croatia. I think you're going to have to add Amsterdam to the list. Miss from Schwieger, and now Roberts across. I would like to go to Amsterdam. Cool city. Tavaninen guarded by Kennedy, and now Roberts a long three. That's off target. Kennedy almost lost his footing, but keeps. Ran out of room, but it's out of bounds off of Bradley. Kennedy threw it off of Mast. Yeah, I think he dribbled it right off of Mast. Right along the baseline. Only way not to turn it over on that play. Williamson had to hurry. And he's not going to get that off in time. No, too much standing around, though. There, I didn't see enough hard cuts. Norris has got to come back and try and help there. So the five-second violation, turnover by the Ramblers, and now Tavanine into inbound for the Bradley Braves. Just under nine minutes to go here in the first half. Drew Valentine's team, a six-point lead here at home. Roberts on the run. Knight tried to... Knocked that one away, but he'll be called for the foul. Bumped him with the body. See the aggressiveness Roberts is showing? Again, he only took four shots the other day. For a guy of this caliber, this ability, who averages 15.9 to score three points, only take four shots. You can have those nights where, wow, I went one for 12 for them. That happens. You're a human being. To only take four shots the entire game, to play a decent number of minutes, I figured he'd be very aggressive today. Roberts, five points in the early going for the Braves. Schwieger's got space for three, misses that time. And the rebound to Connor Linke, the sophomore from St. Charles, who's into the game. Top a nine and a three over Norris. That won't go. And after the scrum, Bradley's got another 20 seconds to work with. Nice pass from Roberts. Top a nine and can't finish in traffic. Well, the pass was outstanding. Just real tough to catch and score on the move like that. Schwieger into the paint. Can't score it. Knight got the rebound. Leons took it away. You can tell sloppy play at both ends, you know, overpassing. Or guys are having a real tough time scoring right now around the ring. 
Bradley is a team certainly knowing, known for its defense and rebounding. That's kind of been the calling card for this program, certainly in the Brian Wardle era. And so they are a team that's going to be tenacious, along with the Ramblers, 20 to 15, seven and a half minutes to go here in the first half in Chicago. Jake from State Farm, if you here, this must be a State Farm commercial. Sure is. It also means it's about to go down. Oh, don't worry, Chris. Things are going to go surprisingly great. Oh, I've been doing this for too many years. It, it means something about to go down. Oh, no. Here it comes. Jake, protect yourself. Have a nice day. I told you. Surprising. Just like State Farm's surprisingly great rates. Who are you talking to? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. There is a difference between an idea and an idea made real. At UE, we rise boldly to the challenge of making a difference and also dream big about solving the problems of today to better our world for tomorrow. We join together knowing that side by side, we can truly make a difference. It's what makes us change makers. We step in, we stand out, and we reimagine everything. And it all starts here at the University of Evansville. Come change the world with us. It begins here with the 32nd chapter of Arch Madness in downtown St. Louis. Stay with your team at its assigned hotel and experience the madness as 10 Missouri Valley Conference schools look to capture the league's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Conveniently located near attractions like the Gateway Arch, the City Museum, and Ballpark Village, side of the MVC Fan Hangout, Team properties, plus the tournament headquarters at Union Station and other Arch Madness hotels offer valley rates to fans wishing to follow their schools all the way to the MVC championship crown. Book rooms at these properties for Arch Madness or for your next trip to St. Louis by calling 1-800-916-0041 or visit ExploreStLouis.com. MVC student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit mvc-sports.com slash one valley. Jordan, I just got a text from a diehard Loyola fan. He went to school here. He was the voice of the team here. He used to be my partner doing games here like 25 years ago. Brian Wheeler said, hey, you guys are coming in loud and clear from Portland. Well, hello, Brian, and hopefully you're enjoying the broadcast and Ramblers leading again here today. We used to play hoop here, and then we would go across street to Bruno's. Very nice. Have a couple beers and something to eat. Yeah, the good old days, man. Very nice. So hope you're doing well, Wheels. Tate Hall finding Tom Welch underneath. Checked in. He was more open than he expected to be and lays it in off the window. Yeah, real good interior pass. Bradley has 15 points, 14 of them in the paint. There is Kent in the corner for Dang. three. That's just the second made three in this game for either team. Bradley now one for seven from beyond the arc. There's Welch. Over Linky, that's short. Rebound to Malibai Leons. Mikey Howell. Trying to get around Linky. Nice pass underneath, and it leads to a basket for Jason Kent. And all of a sudden, it's a two-point game. They continue to make shots in the paint by attacking, attacking, attacking. Well, Loyola has been an outstanding three-point shooting team. They're third in the country at three-point percentage, but so far, Cap, they're one of six. That's one of the reasons why this is a two-point game. Really, really good job, though, to read that, come off the baseline, though the toss is coming over the top. Well done, defense, and a three-point play opportunity here. Connor Hickman getting to the bucket. We are tied at 22. Let's go back and look at 
Here's a kick to the corner, open look, got his feet set. Bang, they knocked down a three. It had been 22-15. Really good catch and finish along the baseline. And then there's the foul and one. Foul goes on St. Thomas, the freshman. And Hickman puts in the free throw, and the Bradley Braves into the lead on an 8 0 run over the last minute eight. Good to see Ugwak back in the game. Went through his concussion protocol test, cleared, back in. He's right now setting the screen for Norris. In the corner, Schwinger open for three. He had his feet set. That was the key because the defender did a really nice job rotating over and getting to the corner. Schwinger was already set. Catch, go, bang. Well, you mentioned Hiro Glock being back on the floor. Loyola led this game 20-12. to 12. How about that dunk from Mast? He got a friendly roll there. Yeah, he just turned to the bench and he goes, it went in. <laughs> he was making motions. It was fun to watch. Meant to do that, right? But Loyola led 20 to 12. Bradley then comes back, takes the lead with Ugwak out of the game. So Rambler is glad to have his defense back in. And now Bradley back across the floor with Kent. Here's Howell for three. That's in and out. That was halfway down. Offense. Offensive foul. Mikey no. Howell just drew it beautifully. No doubt about that one. Swinger so looking. Well, how can that be offense? It was. Ran him over. That arm right in the front. Not at 25. 4.32 to go here in the first half in Chicago. Let's see if the game changes because when Uwak went out after he got hit, that's when it changed, as you said, from 20 to 12, 22 15. So all of a sudden it's a tie game and he's back in now. 10 seconds to shoot for Bradley. Howell out to Mast, has an open three look. Nope. And the rebound tip to Uwak. Schwieger. Good look for Ryan Schwieger, but a little too strong. Owls open. He misses a three. Both these teams really struggling from three. Bradley now one of ten from distance. Loyola is two for eight. Ugwak trying to split defenders and throws it out to the Bradley bench. Outstanding defense again by Brian Wardle's guys. Really good job to take that driving lane away. Leads to a turnover. Every sunrise offers new opportunities to dream big or to take that next small step. Every sunrise is another chance to build on the one before or to start with a clean slate. Because every sunrise is tomorrow's promise made real. And Grinnell Mutual is tomorrow's promise protected. Trust in tomorrow and contact a Grinnell Mutual agent today. At Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Lucky puppy. He has the chance to do something amazing. Become a guide dog. A lifeline to someone who is blind or a service dog, a lifesaver to a veteran with a disability. He's on a mission, and we'll make sure he gets there. You can help. Visit guidedogs.org to learn more.
I'm speechless and humbled by this experience. I just want to put in the work and just show the world what I can do and how I can make the world better. It's an invitation to say, let's change the planet together. We've led so many initiatives that have helped and changed the trajectory of a, a lot of young men. Hi, I'm Allison Rosati, and I'm happy to report on all the good news happening in our neighborhoods. Catch my favorite stories every week, now also available on Amazon Fire TV. Stay tuned for our halftime report, sponsored by State Farm Insurance, a proud partner of the Missouri Valley Conference for surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Have our first half recap, take a look at the stats, and profile the youngest head coach in Division I, that man, Drew Valentine, whose team is off to a 10-2 start in his first year at the helm of this program. There's... A familiar face, that's his brother Denzel Valentine, the former Chicago Bull, who is in the house today, and I know that he's around practice plenty and helping out Drew Valentine. And it's been kind of a cool thing for the Loyola players, having the opportunity to be around active NBA players. Very cool, and he's now with the Knicks, but I think the Bull sent him to Cleveland, Cleveland to the Lakers, the life of an NBA guy. Good to see him in town. Of course, Denzel, the former superstar at Michigan State. So Loyola with the basketball now. After the turnover, and Schwieger with it at the top of the key. Got a size mismatch if he wants to use it. Guac thought about the three, now gets to the paint and lays it in. Really good job to pull up, not travel, and then attack the rim. Roberts is playing that top of the key, reverse the ball steal again, which he's already gotten one. That runner won't go for Roberts, rebound to Mast. Seven seconds to shoot now for the Braves. Mast almost had that one ripped out of his hands by Lucas Williamson. Possession arrow favors Bradley. That's what you love about Lucas Williamson, right? He's such a good defensive player. I mean, the best defender in the league last year. He makes shots. He's an unselfish player, but he's willing to scrap and get, you know, get his nose dirty, get in there. Sometimes you can... You'll find guys who are wonderfully talented on-ball defenders. They're not scrappy. That guy's scrappy. Two seconds to shoot for Bradley. They're going to have to hurry. Inbound goes to Hickman. Look at that inbounds play. Boy, that one will drive Drew Valentine crazy when he watches the tape. Guys, two seconds. We can't give up an unfettered drive to the rim. Ties the game back up at 27. Under two minutes left. Here's Hudson from long distance, no. Hudson doesn't take a lot of threes, but he's been efficient this year. That miss makes him six of 11 from distance. Now 90 seconds to play in the half. Mast for three, that Dang. goes. I believe his third one he attempted tonight that's the first one he made, but that kid has some range. You can tell he's really developing his offensive game. 13 first half points for Rink Mast. He's leading all scorers in this one. Williamson, no. And now Leon's inside and a whistle. We're gonna get a hold inside. On Hudson. See that you just can't give this up. See that's Hudson has got to see that and slide over and take away the dribble or the driving angle. And now Terry Roberts for three. Cans it. Terry Roberts. 
now with eight first half points and the Bradley Braves a six point lead and a timeout taken by Drew Valentine. It's use it or lose it. You've got it in your holster. Why not use it and get the most out of this possession? When the NBC TV network crew travels to campus, it considers these properties home. These hotels consistently support the conference and its 10 member institutions. Please call or visit the websites of these properties when making plans to follow your favorite team away from home. 33 to 27. If Bradley is able to keep the lead, it would be the fourth time all season that Loyola has trailed at halftime. We should mention long way to go for Loyola right now with the fifth longest home winning streak in the nation. 28 straight games they've won here at Gentile. Their last home loss came in 2019 against Davidson. But this has been, Cap, you've been doing Valley games a long time. This is your standard grind it out kind of first half that we're used to seeing in this conference. Yeah, I've been in this league a long time. Thank you to Doug Elgin, the former commissioner, Jack Watkins for giving me that opportunity. I love doing Valley basketball. Like I look forward, I get in the car. There's a three point opportunity. Really good job by Ugwak again. Get in the car, drive to Bradley, to Valpo, to Illinois State. Come here. It's just a lot of fun. It's such a great league. And I coached at Northern. We weren't in the league, but I can't tell you how many games we played against Valley teams. The Valley is a great league. We've had a lot of fun bringing you these games. And a good one here today. Uglock fouled by Kent, but misses the free throw. So only gets two on that possession. Shot clock is off. Four point lead for Bradley. You're going in the locker room feeling good about yourself. You came back from an eight point deficit. And you're going to lead this building the fourth time Loyola's trailed at the half this year. Roberts the miss. Two seconds in the half. One. Kennedy for three at the buzzer. Off target. And the Bradley Braves, as you just said, Cap, have just the fourth halftime lead on Loyola all season. 33 to 29 here inside the Gentile Arena. Quick timeout. We'll be back here in Chicago where the Bradley Braves on the road trying to pick up a win in this building. Nobody's done that in three years. Will Bradley be the team to do it? They're 20 minutes away. We'll be back. in with your checking account without missing a step or deposit a birthday check without ever having to leave the party you can send some money and chip in on a gift that'll make everyone's night or just turn your debit card off when it gets lost in all the excitement wherever you're headed with great southern bank's mobile app in your pocket you can make the most of your money and every moment get started today at greatsouthernbank.com mobile member fdic loyola university chicago sharpening minds through justice and faith. We champion humanity, humility, and heart. Crafting a sustainable future with lessons that transcend the classroom walls. It's by trailblazing from today's troubles that we advance our tomorrow. No action too big or too small in creating the world we wish to see. Set change in motion. Your calling starts now. This is my first time trying on glasses at home. So cute! Five different frames from Willie Parker. Oh, this one's better. Ooh. Ah. Hey. <laughs> the virtual try-on is perfect. Like, they look like they're on my face. Like, look at this. Just swipe and switch. These are definitely a keeper. I think these are the one. Ooh, these look good. That was so easy. They make it so fun and fabulous. Download the My Teams app to stream the Blackhawks wherever you are.
The Missouri Valley Game of the Week is brought to you by State Farm. For surprisingly great rates, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Great Southern Bank, understanding what really matters. By Prairie Farms, farmer-owned, locally produced since 1938. And by Grinnell Mutual Insurance, trust in tomorrow. Welcome to our halftime report sponsored by State Farm. Visit statefarm.com or talk to your local agent to get your own surprisingly great rate on car insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Get a quote today. Our first half highlights are made possible by Live by Lowe's St. Louis. And in the first half, Rink Mast led all scorers with 13 points cap. Yeah, he ties his season high. This is a kid whose footwork I talked to you about early in the game really, really has improved in the paint, but he showed us the range to take three three-point attempts. He knocked one down. I thought he played very well. On the flip side, Ryan Schwieger, the leading scorer for Loyola. He had 11 first half points. He did. He knocked down a big three. He attacks the rim. There's the pass from Norris, and Schwieger finishes inside, and then there he is, set, ready to go from the deepest part of the corner. Want to experience laid-back luxury in the heart of downtown St. Louis, adjacent to Ballpark Village? Visit Lowe'sHotels.com slash St. Louis. That's Lowe'sHotels.com slash St. Louis to book your hotel room today. Back here inside the Gentile Arena alongside David Kaplan. I'm Jordan Burnfield. Thanks so much for joining us here at halftime at Cap. This is as we mentioned before, this is the kind of Valley game that you expect. Two teams that play great defense. It's been a grinded out kind of first half. The Bradley Braves have certainly been trending in the right direction of late after their rough start to the season. And Brian Wardle told us, he said, we feel like we've got the talent to be a really, really good team. It's about finishing games. And again, they're in a tight game with the Loyola team that a lot of people feel like can win this conference again. It's been an impressive performance from Bradley. If Loyola hasn't shot the ball like we expect Loyola to do, but some of that is because Bradley's done a really good job defensively. We said early in the game, Bradley's had a number of games where they lead with three minutes to go, but they're a young team. They just don't quite finish. You got to learn how to win. Can they do that here? That would shock the league. Certainly would and right now the Ramblers trailing here at halftime Bradley with the advantage 33 to 29 here in Gentile Arena stay with us This world is full of opportunities Chances dares windows that open to greatness for tomorrow's workforce it all matters the future is coming tomorrow's leaders are ready to make their statement today. Who are they? Here come the Bears. Whether it's buzzer beaters. Puts one up at the buzzer. Big celebrations. Or an electric atmosphere. We've got it all in the valley. We've got some of the best. We mean the best. Women's basketball in the nation. And the postseason starts here. At, at Hoops, Hoops in the Heartland. We'll see you in the Quad Cities. Visit NBCQuadCities.com for ticket information. I wasn't sure what to expect. College is a huge step for anyone. But you have to put yourself out there a little because that's how you grow. And here, it's how we help each other grow. When you're supported and encouraged to dream big, there's no limit to what you can achieve. I'm Alex Dabrinka with attorney Howard Enkin. As a hockey player, surrounding yourself with the right people is important. If you've been injured, you need Howard on your team. Put his number in your phone right now. I'm here to help. 312, six million. Injury law made personal, that's Aiken Law. Wear by Aaron Andrews, my sportswear collection for all women is now officially licensed with more leagues. Women can support their teams in fashion forward apparel everywhere, anywhere. Find it at fanatics.com, officially licensed everything.
Welcome to our halftime report sponsored by State Farm. Visit statefarm.com or talk to your local agent to get your own surprisingly great rate on car insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Get a quote today. It's time for today's profile made possible by Arch Madness 2022. NBC correspondent Austin Hansen takes a look at first year Loyola head coach Drew Valentine. What's going on, everybody? This is Drew Valentine here, the new head men's basketball coach at Loyola Chicago. And these are my three things that I can't live without. Well, the first thing that I can't live without is my family. Um, family is everything to me. Uh, my family, um, you know, it, it extends so many different ways, right? Starts with obviously my wife, um, then it goes to my parents, then it goes to my brother, uh, then it goes to, you know, my wife's family, then it goes to my Loyola basketball family, uh, then it goes to my Oakland basketball alumni family, my Michigan State basketball family. I mean, just so many different families um, that I've been fortunate to be a part of, but my family has had such an impact for me. I love them so much. I would do anything for them. They are who motivate me on a daily basis, and that's my number one thing that I could not live without. Well, the next thing, I think it might be a little obvious, but uh, it's basketball. Uh, can't, can't live without this game. I love this game. Um, it's my passion, it's my hobby, it's my lifestyle. Um, everything associated with this game, um, you know, the fitness that comes along with it, the strategy that comes along with it, the relationships that come along with it. I mean, just everything basketball related just means so much to me. Love watching it. Um, my wife says to me all the time, you work basketball for, you know, 10, 12 hours during the day, then you come home and you watch more basketball at night. I'm like, yeah, I just can't get enough. So it, it's my passion and it's, you know, something I, I could not see myself living without. Number three, all right, hate to say it, but the phone. It just covers so many different things. It's my way of communicating to, um, you know, my basketball family, my 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 family family. You know, it's the way I communicate to my basketball team. You know, it's, I write my ideas for basketball down on it. My phone um, is just something I <laughs> I hate to say it, but I don't think I could live without. Those are my three things. Can't wait to see you guys at Gentile Arena this season. Tonight's profile is made possible by the 2022 State Farm MBC Men's Basketball Tournament. Make plans to attend the 32nd chapter of Arch Madness, March 3rd through the 6th at Enterprise Center in downtown St. Louis. For more information, visit archmadness.com. Quick timeout. We'll be right back to the Gentile Arena after this. People overlook the Midwest. But the Lou represents. St. Louis is happening. It's a great destination on its own. We got music. Forest Park. Sports. The history. Botanical gardens. We got food. Great food. Great museums and attractions. I like roller coasters. You have to hit up the zoo. One of the top zoos in the country. St. Louis has it all from A to Z. I don't know if it's a well-kept secret or not, but it seems like one. Since 1907, we've been one valley breaking down recruitment barriers, hiring coaches to lead our programs, and developing the country's next set of leaders. MVC student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit mvc-sports.com slash one. This little guy is one lucky puppy. He has the chance to do something amazing. Become a guide dog, a lifeline to someone who is blind, or a service dog, a lifesaver to a veteran with a disability. He's on a mission, and we'll make sure he gets there. You can help. Visit guidedogs.org to learn more. If you're gonna to get to the heart of a story, you need to realize there's never just two sides to every story. There are so many different angles and that requires perspective. In order to find context, you have to know where we've come from. You need to know our history. And this city, this region has quite a history. That's what's so great about having reporters who have been there and seen those moments that shaped and developed this town that we live in. They know the people, they know the backstory, they know the context, and they bring that to the stories that happen day in and day out.
Welcome back to our halftime report sponsored by State Farm. Visit statefarm.com or talk to your local agent to get your own surprisingly great rate on car insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Get a quote today. Let's take a look at our first half stats, a production of Union Station St. Louis, the home of attractions like the St. Louis Aquarium and the St. Louis Wheel. You can do it all at Union Station. See where it takes you. Visit stlouisunionstation.com. What stands out to you the most in the first half? Uh, what stands out to me is Bradley, when they were down 20 to 12, then it was 22-15, and they forced a turnover. And you're thinking, boy, this is danger time against this team, Loyola, in this building. And then they knocked down a big three, made another turnover. I thought their defensive intensity the last three or four minutes was outstanding. The other thing that I'm looking at, too, Cap, is that Loyola is two of nine from three, which speaks to the defensive effort from Bradley. Loyola came into this game third in the country in three-point percentage. They are a almost 42% three-point shooting team. So you wonder if they start to get hot in the second half, that changes this game. Loyola trailing Bradley right now at halftime, 33-29. We'll be back. What drives us? Is it the breath of discovery? Maybe it's a spark to create, a dash of spirit, or a ripple of hope. There's a bright future on the road ahead. Imagine yours at Southern Illinois University. You know, this generation really wants, um, they want it to be equal. They, they expect it to be equal. And I think, um, you know, women from my generation, where we're just so happy that there's youth sports and high school sports for us, uh, I think it's just a mind shift of, you're right, it's, it's not enough just to have a sport, but uh, to be treated fairly and be treated equal. And all the work that our student athletes put in is equal to the men. And... At Valpo. From first hello, it's let's go. This is your running start. Lead, serve, solve, go beyond. You're ready, you got this. Inspiration, motivation, collaboration, dream. Valparaiso University, build the world you want to live in. This is cellulose acetate plant-based material that's not only extremely durable, but also quite flexible, making it ideal for Warby Parker glasses, which, by the way, start at $95, including prescription lenses. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. Oh yeah, about those prescription lenses. Warby Parker glasses come standard with custom-cut polycarbonate lenses that have been treated with scratch-resistant and anti-reflective coatings. Nice. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. The Missouri Valley Game of the Week is brought to you by State Farm. For surprisingly great rates, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Great Southern Bank, understanding what really matters. By Prairie Farms, farmer-owned, locally produced since 1938. And by Grinnell Mutual Insurance, trust in tomorrow. Back here at Gentile Arena, right off the Loyola L stop here in Rogers Park neighborhood of Chicago. Alongside David Kaplan, I'm Jordan Birdfield. Second half underway here at the Gentile Arena where the Ramblers are trailing by four in a building that has been extremely unkind to visiting teams. But Bradley Braves, a run at the end of the first half, and they've got the lead as we begin half number two. Kennedy the miss on the three, and Bradley back down the floor with Roberts. Well, his largest halftime de deficit, six. So they won that game by four against a really good DePaul team. DePaul much improved this year under first-year head coach Tony Stubblefield. That was a very exciting Loyola victory. Here, Uglock, the interception, and here he comes. Good pass. Way. Williamson is fouled on the way up. What a pass by Ugwak. Well, a lot of guys catch that ball, and they're just thinking one thing. I'm going to take it all the way to the rim. 
he always looks down the court to see who is up ahead of him. Really good pass. March Madness 2022 tips off March 3rd through the 6th, and the only place to celebrate before and after all the action in Enterprise Center is the NBC Fan Hangout at Ballpark Village. For all you need to know about the Fan Hangout, download the Arch Madness app today. I have the Arch Madness app, and I will tell you, it is very useful. When you want to follow these games, it's constantly giving you updates and notifications. Stats. Yes. Very useful app. A three-point game. Lucas Williamson with that free throw, just his first point in this game today. There's Melavi Leon's a three. That's good. Leon's on the board for the first time. Drew Valentine not happy because in his scouting report, he talked about this kid, Leon's, can definitely make shots. He does a good job getting his feet set. Dribble, you know where it's going. Boom, he's going to kick to the wing. And a turnover by the Ramblers. Kennedy on the line, out of bounds. Ramblers are out of sync right now. See, Lucas has got to recover quicker. He knows better than that as a veteran player. I've got to make sure I get out there, get a hand up. Here's Leon's on the run, a and bucket one. and the foul. Malavai Leon's, who did not score in the first half, five straight points for the Braves, who extend their lead. He does a good job here with a head and shoulder fake, which is such a great weapon. Uguak just a click late. Close to a charge there. Close. And now Leon's six straight points, and the Bradley Braves have a nine-point lead at the Gentile Arena. There's Jacob Hudson for Loyola. Williamson against Leon's and a foul away from the ball. They're going to get masked, I think, on a hold inside. Yep. Right on it, Cap. First foul on Rink Mast. It's all about advantage, disadvantage, and freedom of movement. That's the way the game has been officiated for several years now. You just can't impede the offensive player's ability to move. Braden Norris, a three try. That won't fall. And Loyola, two for 11 from distance. And a steal. There's Norris to Ugwa in the corner. Williamson thought about the three, now drives baseline. He has that shot blocked. And Roberts comes away with it, but stepped on the line. It'll be Loyola ball. But Bradley's out scrapping Loyola. Bradley is out hustling them right now. Loyola just looks out of sync to me. And Bradley is just doing a really good job swarming to the ball. I know that Loyola played on Thursday, but do you think any of what we're seeing is a little bit of rust? Loyola went no almost doubt. a month without playing a game. They did play that game Thursday. They haven't played in this building in about a month. Last home game was December 10th. Absolutely, it is a factor. No question about it. With all the COVID cancellations and reschedulings and reshufflings, you wonder with a lot of good teams like the Loyola Ramblers how it will affect them. Zuglock throws that one up there, draws a foul. Three fouls now on Jason Kent, the sophomore from Oak Forest. Yeah, Jason Kent, Brian Wardle was just looking out at him saying, Hands straight up. That's called the principle of verticality. The defender owns the space he's standing in all the way up as high as he can reach. But if your hands come down into the offensive player's space, even if he's creating contact in you, you're going to get called every time. Brian's actually demonstrating the principle of verticality <laughs> right now. And Uglock misses that one. So here splits the pair at the line. The Ramblers trailing by eight against this Bradley Braves team that 
has been playing much better basketball of late, trying to win their seventh game in 10 tries. Here's Tavaninen for three. Vile Tavaninen, his first bucket of the game. But and the now, key was the ball went into the low post on one side of the court, across to the corner, and a quick pass. Tavaninen was ready to shoot it. Braves a double-digit lead, and Schwieger misses a three. Roberts, step back, three is short, rebounded to Williamson. Schwieger into the paint, floats it up to short. Yeah, he lost the handle on it. He did. A double-digit deficit for the Loyola Chicago Ramblers on their home floor where they have won 28 straight. Roberts over Schwieger, no. Ubuak almost tipped that in for Bradley. Loose on the floor. And it comes out to Tavaninen. Has space, drills a three. I'm telling you, they're getting out. Fought out, hustled out, scrap. Tip your cap to the guys in red. The Bradley Braves have a 14-point lead on one of the toughest road courts to play in in the country. Vile Tabaninen has hit a couple of threes in the second half, and the Bradley Braves are rolling. Did you hear that? State Farm thing. Dun -dun -dun -dun. I think we're in a commercial. Jake from State Farm, I knew it. Don't worry, Chris, things are gonna go surprisingly great. Dad, look! Ooh, see, surprising. Just like State Farm's surprisingly great rates. I, w I didn't even record it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Are you ready for this sports season? The licensed clinical experts at SSM Health Physical Therapy are. Don't let aches, pain, or an injury keep you from watching your favorite team compete or participating in your favorite activities. Trust our physical therapists to help you feel better, faster, and to get you back to the things you love. With many convenient locations throughout the community, SSM Health Physical Therapy is here to help you heal. To schedule an appointment today, go to SSMPhysicalTherapy.com and experience the power of physical therapy. It's more than an attraction. It's a destination. Spend a day doing it all. Can we go for a ride? That's amazing! Mmm, so is this. It's all here at St. Louis Union Station. Plan your visit at stlouisunionstation.com. Today's MVC legend is Loyola's Cameron Crutwig, a native of Algonquin, Illinois. He became just the fourth player in MVC history to amass 1,500 points, 800 rebounds, and 300 assists. Joining Oscar Robertson, Larry Bird, and Hersey Hawkins, a 2021 third-team All-American and four-time All-MVC choice, he led LUC to the 2018 NCAA Final Four and 2021 NCAA Sweet 16. 45 to 31, Bradley the lead. Today's State Farm MVC Scholar Athlete of the game is Bradley's Jashawn Henry, a senior from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Henry averages 11 points and five rebounds per game during the 21-22 season. A 2021 honorable mention MVC Scholar Athlete selection. Henry has a 3.13 cumulative grade point average in FCS retail merchandising for surprisingly great rates, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, Deshaun Henry is such an important part of the Bradley Braves team. When he is not in the lineup, Bradley is 5-14 coming into this one. They are 0-12 against NBC opponents when he does not play. But despite Henry being on the bench today, they've got a double-digit lead against Loyola in this building. And Chris Knight gets that one to fall. Yeah, that was a big offensive stick back that they desperately needed. 
But again, Bradley's playing with that bounce in their step. Bradley on a 12-3 run right now. They've got a 12-point lead. Here's Mikey Howell, open three, it's good. Well, you got Lucas Williamson shifted over on Tavaninen because he's hit two straight threes. But Bradley's showing you some other guys that can do that as well. Five of the last seven from the field of the Braves. And now a foul on Hickman. So when you look at the last three, okay, the ball's going to get swung. And instead of going to top of nine and Lucas Williamson shading that way, he said, he'll leave me open. I'll knock that down. MVC Hall of Famer is Bradley's Anthony Parker, a native of Naperville, Illinois. He earned the 1996 Larry Bird Trophy, originally the 21st player taken to the 1997 NBA Draft. He snagged 2005 and 2006 MVP honors in the Euro League. A 2016 MVC Hall of Fame inductee, he played 15 professional seasons and is currently assistant general manager of the NBA's Orlando Magic. Join the guys after every game. When your film is your resume, at Lance knows. So you go out there, uh, you attack Minnesota, uh, you hit them in the mouth, you try to get one more win. You need to take in every moment that you have while you have them because you're not going to get them back. I choose to believe that they are truly going to shake things up at Hallis Hall. In a year where you're not going to the playoffs. Right. Why aren't the young guys on the field developing? Don't miss the football after show tomorrow on NBC Sports Chicago and the My Teams app. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. I'm Zach Levine and you're watching the only home for Bulls, NBC Sports Chicago. It's a 15-point lead for the Bradley Braves over Loyola Chicago on the road. And today's Missouri Valley Conference scores and schedule are a presentation of Grinnell Mutual Insurance Trust in tomorrow. Well, I can feel pretty confident in saying that the schools around the Valley are all watching the score here going, what's going on? Right now, Drake and Evansville tied at 13 early on. Northern Iowa will take on Missouri State. That game set to tip in about 35 minutes. And then SIU and Valparaiso coming up as well. I think a lot of people around the Valley did not see this one coming only because, no disrespect to Bradley, nobody's been winning in this building. I mean, Loyola has locked this place down. They don't lose here. 28 straight wins, as we mentioned. And Marquise Kennedy splits the pair at the line. A little shadow coming up the court, trying to slow Bradley's momentum down. Eight seconds to shoot for the Braves. Chris Knight almost got the steal. Here's a three for Howell. That's off the window. And the rebound to Schwieger. Yeah, that was somewhat of a wasted possession. Real good job defensively, but not a lot of movement out of Bradley there. Ryan Schwieger into the paint on Howell. Misses from in close. Boy, and he just dominated him all the way to the backboard. That's what he wants back. He's just physically more... You know, mature right now. Tavaninen, three ball, no, long rebound to Howell. Second chance opportunity, it falls. 
Mikey Howell. He's playing a really good game. Five points off the bench here in the second half. He's had the ball in his hands a lot. He's taking care of the ball. Kennedy floats it up for Knight. Nice feed. And Chris Knight now with four points. Loyola has faced its largest deficit of the season here in this second half, trying to creep back in, trailing by 14. Here is Rink Mast. Three ball won't fall. That was halfway down. Kennedy the kick. Williamson the drive to the 10. Loyola starting to get a little bit more confidence. That was a good attacking drive by Williamson, who had one point prior to that. Lucas Williamson has been held in check today. The Rambler is shooting about 42% from the field, just 16% from three. That one will not go for Tavaninen. Kennedy into the paint. Roberts Great tried to job. take it away. Possession arrow will send it back to Bradley. That was outstanding on ball defense. Watch this. This is a guy that's no chance. He moves his feet. He stays with him. Look how he helps and recovers. You put the ball down. I got you. Really well done. Norris back on the floor for Loyola Chicago as well as Tate Hall. Roberts races into the paint, puts it up over two. No, Linky the rebound, stick back, no. Out of bounds. It'll stay with the Braves when we return. The Bradley Braves are turning heads on the road today. They've got a 12 point lead on Loyola Chicago. Here at the Gentile Arena, 50 to 38. Don't go anywhere. Every sunrise offers new opportunities to dream big or to take that next small step. Every sunrise is another chance to build on the one before or to start with a clean slate because every sunrise is tomorrow's promise made real. And Grinnell Mutual is tomorrow's promise protected. Trust in tomorrow and contact a Grinnell Mutual agent today. It begins here with the 32nd chapter of Arch Madness in downtown St. Louis. Stay with your team at its assigned hotel and experience the madness as 10 Missouri Valley Conference schools look to capture the league's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Conveniently located near attractions like the Gateway Arch, the City Museum, and Ballpark Village, site of the MVC Fan Hangout, team properties, plus the tournament headquarters at Union Station and other Arch Madness hotels offer valley rates to fans wishing to follow their schools all the way to the MVC Championship Crown. Book rooms at these properties for Arch Madness or for your next trip to St. Louis by calling 1-800-916-0041 or visit ExploreStLouis.com. We believe banking should make your life greater. It starts with affordable options to meet today's needs and tomorrow's dreams. From smart account options that fit your style to flexible loans for what comes next. It means convenient ways to access and manage your money whenever you need it and wherever you're headed. Most of all, it takes great support. Someone you can count on for trusted guidance and to be there for you every step of the way. Great options, great convenience, great support for life. Great Southern Bank, understanding what really matters. 50 to 38, Bradley the lead over Loyola Chicago. Download the Arch Madness app presented by Great Southern Bank. Understanding what really matters. The app has all the information you need to know about the tournament schedule, hotel accommodations, and other fun events during the tournament. Download the app on your Android or iOS device today. Cap, you're a man of many devices. Just make sure that you 
download that Ar Arch Madness app. I've already got it. <laughs> I've got the Apple Watch. I've got the Aura Ring on. I've got the iPad, the <laughs> iPhone. Yeah. You're like a walking Apple store. I am. That's basically what I am, a walking <laughs> Apple store. Oh, I got the Apple Pen. <laughs> you too. Let's try to get around all your devices here. Here's Linky wide open to Hickman. Great cut. Spread the floor. Really good job on that backdoor cut. 14-point Bradley lead. One thing that Drew Ballantyne had told us, Cap, was that he felt like the Ramblers had a lot to clean up defensively despite their win over San Francisco on Thursday. And this Loyola team, during the run they've made the last five years, has been such a stingy defensive team. You don't see a lot of plays where you've got guys wide open like this under the basket. Yeah, really good cut right there. Norris turned his back. Everyone's looking at the ball in the post. And it leaves a wide open reverse layup. Last year, Loyola was number one in the country in scoring defense. Tate Hall on the board for the first time in the game. Williams in the steal, but Roberts takes it back. And misses from the elbow, the rebound to Ugwak. Williamson for three. Hits hey. on the other end. Here they come. Timeout, Brian Wardle. Good call, coach. Settle your guys down because Loyola's starting to stalk them a little bit. You feel a little more energy in the building. They've made their last four shots. Now back within nine. Brian Wardle told us, Cap, that as much talent as he believes his Bradley team has, closing out games is something his young team has to learn to do. They had a big lead. It's now nine. You have under 11 minutes. This is another big test for this young team. It is. And I, I went back, did the math. Since Ugwak had to leave to go get checked after he got hit in the head, he's back in the game. It's been a 40 to 23 Bradley run. Well, it shows you the value that a here Ugwak provides on both ends of the floor. His offense this year has been the best we've seen it in his career with the Ramblers, but defensively, he's been one of the best in the country. We talk about Lucas Williamson a lot, and we should because he is one of the best defenders in the country. Ugwak probably a little bit less heralded as a defender. But anyone will tell you he is an outstanding defensive player. No question about it. He's back in, and you saw him trigger the break there. Having him back on the court is such a huge thing for the Ramblers. And an offensive foul against the Braves. Brink Mast whistled underneath, trying to jockey for position. Brian Wardle saying that's a flop. And they have not gotten a lot out of Mass lately. He's been stuck on 13 points, tying his season high for a long, long time this afternoon. They need him to get the ball in the post and get some things going. There's Hall to the basket. Tate Hall now with four. And it's now a seven-point game, seven straight points for Loyola. Right back in and out of the timeout from Drew Valentine. Howell down low Hickman beautiful play and the freshman Connor Hickman now with nine points that was the easy part that pass was outstanding <laughs> Ugwak underneath gets it to fall he was not going to be denied there. And that's the maturation not. of his game camp, right? To see him aggressively under the basket make a play like that. Howell tried to thread the needle. It's out of bounds. And Rink Mast placing his hands towards the floor, trying to settle his team down. Seven-point game, 9-18, and you feel like the vibe in the building has completely flipped momentum starting to build towards those maroon and gold scarves 
that are littered throughout this arena. There's Knight off a beautiful feed from Hall. Timeout, Brian Wardle. Five-point game here at the Gentile Arena. Okay, watch this. Really good job. Rink Mass was just a little bit late reacting. Bam, there's your cut to the basket. There he goes, and Rink's like, oh, boy. Really good job by Knight. Good hard cut right to the basket. 11-2 run for the Loyola Ramblers. They've made their last seven field goals, and here Uguak in this game is six for six from the field. So not only from the defensive side, but from an offensive standpoint, Uguak has been the most consistent Rambler in this game. Chris Knight and Tate Hall linking up on that really nice feed underneath. To get Loyola back within five, Cap. Again, I think Bradley needs to get the ball settled down, get mass posted. He's been tough to defend down there. He's got a size advantage. Get him the ball. Let's see if they can get him an opportunity to score. Here's Mask. Had some space. Can't get that one to go. Williamson tied up with Leons. And it's going to be Rambler basketball. But Lucas went down awkwardly. Make sure he's okay. Here's he is. The mast had the open look. Waited, waited. All right, all right, I guess I'll take it. And that is, that's scary the way he fell. But he's here's, okay. Yeah. Here's fine. Here comes a 2-2-1 look out of Bradley. Just a nuisance. Eight and a half minutes to go. Norris has space on the wing. Three won't go. Second chance is good for Knight. Boy, just outworking him. We talked earlier. I said to you, Bradley's out scrapping him. Loyola has flip the switch on three-point game Williamson the steal out of bounds crashing in towards the table it brings us to a timeout it's been all ramblers of late 13 2 run for the home side Trying to keep their 28-game home winning streak alive. Watch them bang the glass. That's just getting good inside position. Stick that bad boy home, and we got a three-point game. Arch Madness. It's all about the excitement. The fans. The history. The big moments. Shoots with the hard. Go! It's all about the madness. To make it to the tournament. And March, it, it begins, begins here. here. I'll see you in St. Louis. Visit archmadness.com for ticket information. When you're in Chicago for the big game, business or vacation, stay at the preferred hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference, the Hampton in Chicago, North Loyola Station. The Hampton in Chicago, North Loyola Station features relaxing guest rooms, spectacular views from the rooftop terrace, workout facilities, and free high-speed wireless. Located adjacent to the LUC campus, steps from the CTA Red Line, and several dining options, the Hampton Inn is the place to stay when your favorite Valley school is in town. The preferred hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference, the Hampton in Chicago, North Loyola Station. about your friend but don't know how to reach out 
you can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Our next NBC TV Network production, a presentation to the Hampton Inn Chicago North Loyola Station, will be Wednesday, January 12th. The Drake Bulldogs play host to the Illinois State Redbirds. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock Central. Call 312-265-5800 or visit HamptonInLoyola.com to book your next hotel rooms for your team's game at Loyola or your next trip to Chicago. Here at Genteel Arena with David Kaplan, Jordan Burnfield. This has been a lot of fun. And another turnover. This is a shot clock violation on Bradley. Loyola with the opportunity to add. They're on a 13-2 run. Bradley led this game by 15 at one point. But now it's a three-point game. And the momentum has shifted back to the Ramblers, who have a 28-game home winning streak on the line. Brian Wardle is furious. And he just, the official just said, that's a warning. A foul I, called on Terry Roberts. Yeah, I did not see contact there. And now Williamson stops on the baseline. Jumper is too strong. Rebound to Tavaninen. Bradley trying to get some of the momentum to turn their way. Early in the second half, it was all Braves. There's Mass, the mismatch against Williamson. Roberts, window, no. Mass, second and chance. One. Yes, and a foul. And Bradley needed that. Big, Big Mass now with 15. They had to get somebody to make a play, and I said to you at the timeout, when's the last time Mast has taken a shot inside. He just outworks Knight there. Knight got him at one end. Mast got him at this end. Rink Mast, after 13 of the first half, his first bucket of the second half. And now the sophomore calmly hits the free throw. Got 16 season high for Rink Mast. Five rebounds and assists. Schweiger trying oh, to get position, and yep, great job underneath the basket by Tavaninen to draw it. Tavaninen did a good job at getting a wide base. He spread his legs a little bit wider, tried to dig in as hard as he could. Schweiger's a little bit bigger and lowered the shoulder. Bradley trying to create some space. Up by six now after Loyola get it down to three. Freshman Hickman there stole. You go. There's a foul and right back here. Yep, fouled on, fouled by Leons. Watch Ugwak again read the passing lane, step in, and get the steal. He sees it all the way. Boom, I got it. And now there's the clear grab. This is why coaches and scouts are always talking about wingspan, right? Correct. When you got those long arms to get out there in the passing lane to turn a game. Third steal for Ugwak. So now the officials are going to review that last sequence. We will bring you the latest once we have it. Drew Valentine. Drew wants an intentional foul. Yep. He's talking to Ed Two shots in the ball. Tough call. The circumstance makes you think it's intentional more than the action of the defender. Right, it wasn't an aggressive foul. We'll see how the officials rule. Ed Crenshaw and Randy Heimerman, along with Urban Wilson, are officials for this one today. Now Drew's like, hey, are we getting the intentional here? 
Well, we'll get we'll an explanation out. right now. So it's going to be a flagrant foul call. They are yep. going to call that a uh, flagrant one, unnecessary, not excessive, which is somebody can get hurt, but an unnecessary. It'll be two shots, Uguak, and the ball out of bounds to Loyola. Well, this is Flagrant huge. One. This is huge. Huge play. Because Loyola can basically erase the deficit in this sequence here. Uguak at the free throw line and hits the first. Uguak today is just two of four from the line, but he is an almost 77% free throw shooter. Is somebody you would want there if you're the Ramblers. It doesn't get the roll. Just a tad short. So five point game. And now Braden Norris. Williamson tried to fit it in tonight. It's loose. Schwieger maintains for Loyola. Eight seconds to shoot for the Ramblers. Norris drives into the paint. No. Uguak got it. And now they're going to say a foul on the floor against Bradley. So Terry Roberts is going to pick up his fourth foul right there. That's a big foul. A five, I'm trying to think like I'm back on the bench. I'm Brian. I'm five up with 6.05, and my best player has four. I got to sit you. Much as I don't want to, I got to buy some time. Block back at the line, but misses again. Two big free throw misses for a hero block. Ramblers 50% at the line in this game. They came in at 71% for the season. Nine seconds to shoot. Leons finding Mast with four, with three. Got it. Funny. He's gotten two baskets inside, and they've extended their lead, and everyone's settled down. Get the ball to the big guy. You said it. Uguak passed up a three try. He tries to get into the paint, leaves it off for Knight. Great pass. Uguak doing it all night. Catch and finish. Five point game, 5 10 left. Bradley trying to pull off a signature win. And Braden Norris reaches in for the foul on Tavaninen. Yep, he was beaten by Tavaninen. Let's watch Uguak again. It's a really good job to make a bounce pass inside tonight. That bounce pass was on the money. Here Uguak, 14 points, 6 of 6 from the field, but now 2 of 6 at the free throw line. The Ramblers really were unable to capitalize after that flagrant one. And now Knight bumps Mast. Chris Knight with three fouls. Yeah, I believe that's the fifth team foul on Loyola. That's right. And now another whistle. Braden Norris. So that's number six. And Norris is saying he hooked me. Wanted the hook. The hook and hold was such an important emphasis a couple of years back. Norris does not win the argument. Nine to shoot. Howell. Hickman for three. No. And tapped out to the Ramblers. Tate Hall on the wing. Three. No. Rebounded Knight. And it'll stay with Loyola with 16 to shoot. 
got a little out of control. After the shot, it just all broke down. You want to throw that ball back out and re-rack your offense. Loyola catches the break. Ball goes out of bounds to the Ramblers. Loyola in this game cap three out of 15 from beyond the arc. You got to give Bradley a lot of credit defensively guarding the three-point line. Brian Wardle said it was going to be a key to this game to not let Loyola crush you from deep. And they have managed at this point in the game to keep Loyola from beating them from long range. They have. They've done a good job at not getting dominated inside, but still getting out to the three-point strike. Norris draws a foul right at the end of the shot clock. Zeke Montgomery gets that foul. And now Norris to the line. Norris does not get to the line much, but 9 of 13 on the season. Bradley lead down to four. Get it down to one possession with a make here. And he does. Well, he's going to pick up full court. Go into deny mode. Powell inside Leon's easy bucket. Well, you, how do you beat pressure? Attack the goal to score. Well done by Bradley. They go down low again. Ublock lost the handle. And whistle on the floor before that shot even went up. Yeah, I think it's going to be a hold inside. Yep. It'll be Loyola basketball when we return. But the Bradley Braves hanging on to a lead, 61-56. to Malibai Leons and the Braves trying to shock the Ramblers on their home floor. Jake from State Farm, if you here, this must be a State Farm commercial. Sure is. It also means... It's about to go down. Oh, don't worry, Chris. Things are going to go surprisingly great. Oh, I've been doing this for too many years. It, it means something about to go down. Oh, no. Here it comes. Jake, protect yourself. Have a nice day. I told you. Surprising. Just like State Farm's surprisingly great rates. Who are you talking to? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Arch Madness tips off March 3rd through 6th in St. Louis, and the MVC Fan Hangout is back at Ballpark Village. The MVC Fan Hangout is the place to celebrate before and after all games at Enterprise Center and Ballpark Village, including newly opened Sports and Social, featuring restaurants, entertainment, and everything Arch Madness. The fun starts two hours before the first game every day of the tournament. For more information, visit archmadness.com. We'll see you there. Today's MVC famous alumni is Loyola's Ian Brennan, a native of Mount Prospect, Illinois. He's known for his work on the television shows Glee, Scream Queens, and The Politician. A 2000 LUC graduate, he teamed with Ryan Murphy to write the first two seasons of Glee, earning two Writers Guild of America Awards nominations in 2010. The moment you order the world's most delicious snacks from Nuts.com, something truly magical happens. Freshness. Your choice of fresh nuts, dried fruits, sweets and treats are hand-selected from our kitchen. Freshly roasted to perfection or freshly baked, freshly dipped, freshly seasoned or freshly popped. Packaged fresh and Nuts.com delivers this yumminess super fast with free shipping. Nuts.com. Fresh snacks from our kitchen to yours. 61-56, Bradley trying to beat Loyola on the road. Our players of the game are a presentation of State Farm, a proud partner of the Missouri Valley Conference. For surprisingly great rates, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Rank mass, 18.6 rebounds for the Bradley Braves. And here, Ugwa, 14 points, hasn't missed from the field, did miss four free throws, which have been surprising in this one and they could end up very costly does have three steals though in this game well, Brink Mass had 13 in the first half had kind of a slow stretch at the beginning of the second half but has picked things up late and has allowed Bradley to build a little bit of distance here since Loyola got it down to three this time Uglock calmly hits the free throw 
four-point game, 345 left. Loyola's last home loss was December 22nd, 2019 against Davidson. And Davidson's got a heck of a program. They do. There's our guy, Drew Valentine. There's Kent. And he's fouled on the way in. I think it's, is it Knight? It's either going to be Knight or Hall. That's oh. going to be Tate Hall. And so it'll be Jason Kent to the line. Kent coming off a game where he scored a career-high 18 points on Wednesday against Missouri State. The Braves losing on a buzzer-beating three by Isaiah Mosley. Bradley's been in a lot of close games, trying to come out on the right end of this one here at Gentile Arena and make a big statement to the rest of the Valley. Yeah, Brian Wardle's a, such a good coach, but defensively, his team has really done a great job today. Kent gets one out of two. 3.29 left. Four-point game. Williamson lost the handle to Roberts. Too much dribbling. Got to pass the basketball. Down to three minutes. Mast space for three. No. Kent, second chance, yes. And no block out inside. Hall's got to do a better job sealing off there. Good job on the offensive glass and an easy stick back. Six point game. Loyola is 3 of 15 from 3. They could use one right here. Williamson leaves it off for Knight. Keep attacking. Get a high set out of Bradley. This is how they like to initiate. They're going to milk the clock as best they can and then work off that high ball screen. Williamson goes for the steal. Five seconds to shoot. Roberts hoists from way downtown. No. And Knight grabs the rebound for Loyola. Norris. Williamson for three. He got it. And a foul. Wow. What a shot. Williamson was set looking for it. I didn't think he'd hoist. He did. Defender closed out. Contact and one four-point opportunity. Chance to tie the game for the Ramblers. I mean, that is a big time shot. Just got to be better defensively there from Jason Kent. Cannot allow the contact that he did. A chance to tie the game for Williamson. Not it up at 64. First time we've been tied since it was 27 all. I expect Williamson to make a player Uguak defensively just the way the game's gone and they're both outstanding defenders on ball. Kent. No. Rebounded Hall. Norris inside to Knight. Loyola takes the lead with 106 left. That over-the-top pass, Knight has just camped out on the baseline and done an outstanding job. Catch, bounce, go. Ball doesn't hit the deck. Timeout, Bradley. Well, this place is buzzing. 
8-0 run over the last minute, 23. See the screen roll, just the bounce, catch, let's go. What a pass by Norris. Bradley led by 16 with 13.49 left. You notice how he does not bounce the ball in the paint because as a defender comes down to try and help, that's what they're swatting at. He catches it, gathers, just finish. And it gives Loyola the advantage. First lead since Loyola led 27-25. Drew Valentine's team has got the momentum. They've come all the way back. They're on an 8-0 run. But Brian Wardle's team has been in this spot. Bradley's three Valley games have been decided by a combined, combined nine points with no game featuring a margin of more than five. So they've been in this spot before. Brian Wardle talked about it with us. What do you think he's telling his group right now? Guys, calm down. We got a full minute to go. We're two points down. Let's get the ball inside. Let's see if we can get to the line. Don't panic. You do not have to take the first shot opportunity. Let's get the first good shot opportunity. It was 50 to 34 at the 1349 mark. Bradley in control. You and I are getting texts from people that are just on fire that are Bradley fans. Long way to go. Relax. Still got a long way to go. 57 seconds left. Leons with 10 to shoot. Mast with 5 to shoot. Over Uglock. Yes! Tied back up. Good things happen when he touches the ball in the paint. Knotted at 66. About a 7 second difference between the shot and the game clock. And now Drew Valentine wants to talk things over. 33.4 seconds left. Mast has 20 points. Every time they've needed to stem a run, they've gotten him the ball, he's gotten a basket. 20 points on 9 of 17 shooting, 6 rebounds, and 3 blocks for Rink Mast, the sophomore from the Netherlands. And the Loyola Ramblers, not only Cap, have they been extremely dominant in this building. We've mentioned several times, 28 straight wins at home. Against teams from this state of Illinois, they've won 19 straight games. I mean, this has been a team in Loyola that has dominated the state, that has dominated in this Missouri Valley Conference. Overall, Loyola is 29-4 and in their last 33 games. And Bradley led by 16 in this one. But when you play here at the Gentile Arena, as 28 other opponents have found out, not so easy to win. Yeah, I give a lot of credit to a timeout that Drew Valentine took, and he had seen enough. He was more animated than we normally see him. He's a pretty calm guy. Yeah. They came out of that timeout, and all of a sudden, it was like a, a switch got flipped. And there was more activity defensively. There was more aggressiveness and then they hit a couple of shots Lucas Williamson hit a big three and boom he hits the four-point play and here we are 30 seconds to go tend to shoot now for Loyola here's Williamson Five to shoot, puts up a three. No, loose, Schwieger throws it out to Williamson. Four seconds left, three seconds. Williamson in for the win, no. Overtime, Drew Valentine wants a foul call. There is no foul and overtime is coming here at Gentile Arena. There was zero chance they were calling a foul. Officials are gonna let the players decide this game let's take a look and see again if it's a legit foul you got to call it but if it's close I like letting players decide the game here comes Williamson he attacks there's a lot of ball there that's a good job by the officials bonus basketball coming up oh. 
Every sunrise offers new opportunities to dream big or to take that next small step. Every sunrise is another chance to build on the one before or to start with a clean slate because every sunrise is tomorrow's promise made real and Grinnell Mutual is tomorrow's promise protected. Trust in tomorrow and contact a Grinnell Mutual agent today. I think the thing I love most about going back to St. Louis are the people. Every time I come back, there's something new. There's so much of the city that I have yet to explore. From Six Flags to the Science Center to the Louvre. Ted Drews. Hey, and what about the sports? Come on. You have to get to a Cardinals game. You have to get to a Blues game. I mean, you have to see the arch if you go to St. Louis. It is Instagram bait. St. Lou is home. It's my home. What can you do in a moment? Check in with your checking account without missing a step. Or deposit a birthday check without ever having to leave the party. You can send some money and chip in on a gift that'll make everyone's night. Or just turn your debit card off when it gets lost in all the excitement. Wherever you're headed, with Great Southern Bank's mobile app in your pocket, you can make the most of your money and every moment. Get started today at greatsouthernbank.com slash mobile. Member FDIC. Five minutes on the clock, overtime getting set to begin here at the Gentile Arena. Lucas Williamson, an opportunity at the end of regulation, but it was not a foul. And so we go to overtime. Loyola trying to get its biggest comeback win since 2015 when they trailed by 18 against Toledo and wound up coming back to win at 69-62. Loyola and Bradley playing in the 68th all-time meeting between these two schools and this is the first time that the two schools are playing into overtime how about that yeah 32 31 rebounding advantage for Bradley offensive rebounds not a huge factor 11 9 in favor of the Braves they get the ball here to start this is like having a great meal Jordan and the Mater D says I'm buying your dessert for you Bonus basketball. Although this is nervous time for the fans, they might be thinking after dinner drink. And off the miss there. Loyola with an opportunity to go back ahead. There's Williamson. Now Ubloch for three from the wing. That will not fall. Rebound to Kent who's playing with four fouls here at the beginning of overtime. As is Robert. That's right. On the drive, Roberts drawing the foul on Norris. So Terry Roberts has eight points in this game. Leading scorer and assist man for Bradley has been mostly held in check today. Three of 14 from the field. It goes to the line with an opportunity to put Bradley back in front. And the first one will not go. Ryan Schwieger is back in for Loyola. Schwieger 11 points in this game. But the Ramblers 4 of 18 from beyond the arc. Both free throws missed by Roberts. Schwieger fouled and he'll go to the line. That's on Terry Roberts, and that's it for Terry Roberts. He is fouled out of the game. So Bradley's leading scorer and passer will have to watch the rest of this one from the bench. Terry, a career 69% free throw shooter. And as you said, he missed those two, his last offensive action before fouling out, and that will drive him crazy because he's a really good player. 
Well, we saw Roberts miss a couple free throws. We saw Ubuak miss a couple free throws uncharacteristically. 66 all. Ryan Schwieger at the line. He hits the first. Loyola back in front. The Ramblers are 7 0 this season when Schwieger scores in double figures. And he's got 12 points today. Make it 13 in a two point lead. So Schwieger goes back out. And they put Tate Hall back in defensively. Yep. Gives you a guy who only has one foul, only two on Schwieger, but. This way, you, you feel like you have a better defensive matchup, then you get Schwieger back in offensively. There's Tavaninen for three. No. Tip back out. And the Ramblers get it. Hall finding Williamson. Williamson out to Norris with eight to shoot. Space for Lucas. The three try is short. Two point Loyola Chicago lead. Three minutes to go in overtime number one. Kent. No. Mast. Gets the board. No. And Ubla comes down with it. Couple of good opportunities for the Braves, but yeah, come up short. Second one's the one he wants back. Oh, the kick to Ubla. Stopped his dribble. And now Williamson with eight seconds to shoot. Lucas Williamson for three over Mass. No. Rebounded Chris Knight. And a fresh 20 for the Ramblers. I would expect some type of dribble penetration. Try to get something going toward the rim rather than settling for a three. Williamson in traffic. Ubuak into the shot clock. No. And Knight going to be called for the foul as he tried to go over Tavaninen to tip that back. So Chris Knight picks up his fourth personal. Chris Knight has been one of the unsung heroes for the Ramblers in this game. 14 points, seven of eight from the field, nine rebounds, but now playing with four fouls as you see him go over the top. No doubt about that foul. He was trying to tap it back out, but a lot of contact. No doubt about the foul. So Vile Tavaninen, a guy that doesn't go to the line much. Seven of nine on the season. Two enormous free throws for him here if he can hit the first, and he does. Tavaninen missed a few games at the beginning of the season with a foot injury, but a big part of this team, real good shooter from the outside. Calmly hits both to retie the score at 68. So Tom and Einig goes out. The freshman Hickman back in. Brian Wordle really likes Connor Hickman, the freshman, to play big minutes here in overtime. Schwieger the kick. Williamson the drive lost the handle, but a foul is called. Yep, and let's see if they're going to get Howell. They will get Howell. Watch the dribble. There's the penetration, and there's the contact. No doubt about it. Right there. Three on Mikey Howell. Lucas Williamson puts Loyola back in front. One Lucas thing. was held scoreless in the first half, but now is 11. He was. He hit that big four-point play. But Loyola has knocked free throws down as of late. Uguak missed early, but as of late, both teams have been making free throws. And after the Ramblers really struggled from the field in the first half, they have been much better overall in the second half, but a miss there. All right, jinxed. Sorry. 
Broadcaster Jinx gets us again. Hold inside on Schwiegel. Third foul on Ryan. That's one you don't want to take. Just a hold as a guy's making a cut off the initial setup of your offense. Jason Kent connects. Tied back up. Kent. One more opportunity to put Bradley into the lead. No. My goodness. You mentioned how Loyola has dominated the state of Illinois college teams. Their last 19 in the state of Illinois have been wins, and the last one that they lost to Southern at Southern, January 29, 2020. That's right. There's Braden Norris, misses a three. Uguac grabs it with 103 left in OT. And now a timeout taken by Drew Valentine. Wow, do we have a game here at the Gentile Arena. Time now for today's play of the game brought to you by Great Southern Bank. Understanding what really matters. Lucas Williamson drilling this three from the wing and getting to the line for the free throw to complete the four point play. And the Ramblers tying things up late in regulation. And now here we are with 101 remaining in this overtime period. And the Ramblers and the Braves all knotted up at 69 apiece. Yep, but just telling you, tell your friends, turn on NBC Sports Chicago. We got a doozy going. 69 all. Loyola was 70 to 54, excuse me, 50 to 34 in the hole. Come all the way back. And now we're here in overtime. 70 has been that high watermark for Bradley when they score 70 points. They have been unbeaten. And for Loyola, this is a team that typically would not even allow 70 points. Granted, it has taken an overtime period to do it. Loyola allowing 62 points per game on the season. And scoring almost 80. Their offense has been a little bit more high powered this season than perhaps it has been in years past. But 106 to go. Drew Valentine's team has come all the way back in this one cap. They trailed by 16, trying to pull off an overtime win to extend that home winning streak. What do you think he's telling his guys? Because he has the benefit of a lot of experienced seniors that he can throw out there. Don't settle for a perimeter jump shot. Guys, we got 16 seconds. Let's get into our offense and let's see if we can get the ball inside. They've had a lot of success. Dribble penetration from Norris or Williamson, and then the toss over the top to either Ugwak or Knight. Knight's had a really good game getting all his points around the basket. He's got 14 points, he's got 10 rebounds. He does have four fouls, but I would try and get some dribble penetration going downhill and then throw it up over the top, see if I can get him an easy basket. And to your point, even though Loyola came into this game third in the country in three-point field goal percentage, they're four of 22 today. Just not hit the threes. Correct. Bradley's done a great job on the perimeter against the Ramblers in this one. Braden Norris. Kicks to the corner. Williamson hits a three. There you go. Take it inside, out. Get a really good player, a really good shot. Three-point lead for Loyola. 40 seconds left. Leons out to the corner. Three try, no. Kent couldn't come up with it. Norris has got it. About a four second difference between the shot and the game clock. And Howell fouls Williamson with 25.8. Well, Cap, we just got talk, done talking about how the Ramblers haven't been making their threes. And then Lucas Williamson must have hurt us because then they just drilled one to put Loyola ahead. He did. Now he got a clean look. 
I mean wide open look in the corner. And he's a really good shooter. So if you're going to get somebody a good look, Norris, him, those are the guys you want taking that shot. Williamson, 14 points now. And hits the first free throw. Make it 15. And the Ramblers up by four. Loyola, when they hit 70 points, they are 8 0. Trying to make it 9 0. Lucas Williamson has calmly made it a five point game. And again, we talked to Brian Wardle yesterday. He said, Do you know how many games we've led with three minutes to go? Yep. And we can't close them out. We're a young team. We've got to close those out. They had that again today. Turnover, ball loose. Fight on the ground for the basketball. Jump ball, possession to Loyola. 15.4 seconds left. And the Ramblers try to escape with a hard-fought victory on this floor. Well, here's the scrum inside. He was trying to get the ball on a roll to rink mast. And there's the contact. Bodies all over. Really good job by Howell to get a hand on it. And then bodies everywhere. So 15 seconds left in this overtime. A five-point game. Bradley had to have a basket there. And now Drew Valentine's team in the driver's seat trying to escape with this overtime win. Even if Loyola wins this game, you can see the talent that Bradley has. This is going to be a tough team to play against as they continue to get more experience. You're exactly right. Bradley, like you grow playing in games like this, but going back to the three that Lucas Williamson hit, and he's open in the corner, and a good friend of mine who's watching the game, who was a coach in this league, who's, I think, an outstanding basketball player, Greg Lansing, said, I'm watching the game. Check out the, the hammer screen. Outstanding job to get Lucas that shot in the corner. So, tip of the cap. Fifteen point four seconds left. The Loyola Ramblers will have to inbound it and go across the floor. Lucas Williamson will do the honors. Bradley needs a steal. Baseball pass down the floor, and Uguak was trying to save it but lost the handle. It's a turnover, and the Braves will have it, and no time expired. Correct, and now they're going to get the ball all the way back at the other end. Wow. Tried to go for the home run ball to get it ahead of the defense. And now the Ramblers open the door a little bit for the Braves. Fifteen point four left. And now the officials back at the scorer's table trying to confer. I think they want to double check on the clock perhaps here. No time came off the clock on that sequence. And now you see Urban Wilson. There's a substitution there. Tate Hall comes out of the game. Connor Hickman to inbound from underneath his own hoop. It's tipped and it's stolen and Williamson's got it and a foul call. Lucas Williamson is going to end up with if he knocks down these free throws 18 points in the game but I just thought the defensive effort by Loyola to clamp down was just tremendous and they come up with another steal here. Well, Loyola turned it over, and then they turned Bradley over, and the defense, as you said, is clamped down here late. Twelve and a half left. Great throw, good for Lucas Williamson. The Ramblers now up six with 11 seconds left in the overtime. See, all these years of winning, Final Fours and Sweet 16s, 
that pays off in games like this because you don't panic against a team that hasn't done that yet. 76-69. Here's Kent underneath. He'll throw down the dunk. With 7.9 left. Hamler's got to get it in. They will to Williamson with 6.5. going to go down as a looks like a 78 70 something game Bradley played a heck of a basketball they did that was the only field goal that Bradley has made in the overtime period Loyola's field goal was the Williamson three that ultimately put them ahead in this one correct this has been your grind it out kind of valley game that we're so accustomed to seeing over the years these teams scout incredibly well they play tremendous defense Williamson now 20 points Seventy-eight, seventy-one, with 6.5 to go Ramblers about to pick up their seventh straight win there's a three at the horn from Hickman no good and the Loyola Ramblers home winning streak survives it was challenged very tough by Bradley today, but the Ramblers win it 78 to 71. Our next Missouri Valley Conference game of the week will be Wednesday, January 12th. The Drake Bulldogs play host to the Illinois State Redbirds. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock Central Time. The Ramblers, seven point victors today, now 29 straight wins at home. Seven straight wins overall, and they moved to 2-0 and in the Valley of what was a great game. It was an outstanding game to call. Bradley has just got to find a way to get over the hump. They, you're right, they've got talent. But today, the team that's battle-tested found a way to win in overtime. For David Kaplan and our entire crew, I'm Jordan Birdfield. The Loyola Ramblers win it in overtime, 78-71. to Thanks so much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your Saturday.